In this video, I'm going to show you how to get your gradebook set up. Now for this, I am using the desktop program of RenWeb instead of the web access. And so to set up my gradebook, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to gradebook up here, click on it. And right now, I have my classes right here, these four. And I'm just going to click this one. And I'm going to set up the gradebook for this. Now it has all my students listed right now, but there's no categories, no grades yet to be put in. So to set up, once I've selected my class, I'm going to click this button right up here. It says Setup. And now I have all these options to choose from. First, up here, I choose how I calculate my grades. I can either go by straight points, whereas a test is worth 100 points and a homework is worth 10 points, and then it all gets mixed together or by weighted percentage, where the homework is its own category, the tests are its own category. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm not quite sure what mixed is, so you can come talk to me if you are curious about that. Uh, the default setting is that if you set a grade as incomplete, it will treat it as a zero and it will show up red. If you don't want that, you can just unclick that. Currently, when it shows a web progress report, it shows full details. Your other options are just the average of each category or just the term average. And usually you want to leave it as full details. Down here, these options are for those who choose to give extra credit and are worried about grades being overinflated. You can choose to cap either the category, be it homework or test or quiz or whatever, at 100%. Or you can just cap the final grade at 100%. And that's what I'm going to do. Now, under student sorting, they have many options. As you can see right now in this class, they're organized by last name first, alphabetically. But if I wanted to turn it around and have their first names, I can save that, and all of a sudden, now they're organized by their first names. Well, I don't want that. So I'm going to go back to right here. They're going to sort by their last name first. One thing I will point out is that it also has what's called an alias. And I'm going to get to that in a second. But this is especially helpful for those of you who may be a foreign language teacher and you want to remember your student by uh, a foreign language name. You can set their alias. And I'll show you that in a second. Assignment sorting. When you put in assignments, and that can be homework, that can be quizzes, that can be tests, that can be projects, that can be participation, it can be anything. You have to decide how you're going to sort it. And the default is the due date is descending. That means that when you pull up part of your gradebook, the most recent assignment is going to be here on the left, and the late and the earliest ones, the most furthest, are going to show up more on the right over here. And for some people, that's fine. For some people, that doesn't make sense. Some people prefer the earliest ones here and the latest ones here. If that's the case, no problem. Just hit due date ascending. Now there's a difference between the due date and the date they were added. Because in some cases, you may have an assignment that's due the next day, as opposed to a project that may take a week. And usually, we put them in terms of their due date as to when they're, put in, when they're entered into the gradebook. Under here, we have student aliases. So here, I've just given a few, few students uh, a few aliases. So I'll just give them just a few more, save them, and then I'll exit. And so here, I'll show you what it looks like when they sort by their alias. Now keep in mind, I only entered the first five names as aliases, and the rest I left blank. So there you can see it shows the blanks first and then Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo down here. And we'll get out of that. Okay. Now, the grading scale is set as it is. Now, since this is an honors class, 99%, 95%, 93%. For a non-honors class, this would be 98.5, 94.5, and so on. It goes down by half a place. And that's set in stone. You can't change that. The time frame. 
you have the semester, you have the term, you have the year. I'm just going to go ahead and set it for the year. And I'm going to click Save. Now, I reset my names, and they are the way I want. Now, I'm going to go back to Setup real quick, and I want you to see one thing. I can copy this setup to all my other classes. So you don't have to go through and go through the same menu if you have five different classes. I can just go to this list, and here's all my classes throughout the year. Now, one thing to be aware of is that this is true for classes in the first semester and the second semester. Because remember, previously I had four. Well, now I have eight. That's because this is the first semester class. This is the second semester of that class. This is the first semester, second semester of that class. So you want to be sure that at least for now, or you can do all of them, you can just hit the setup. So I'm going to click that, hit copy. And it should be only done one time. Yep, well, that class is blank anyway. And it's finished. And I can do that for all of them. And it's going to give me the same warning for all of them. But that's OK. All right. So now, hopefully, you should be able to get your gradebook, at least your preferences, set up.